Let's talk about fossilization. What is a fossil? Generally defined, a fossil is evidence of past life that has been chemically or geologically altered. There are many different ways a fossil can form, so let's look at some of those. One of the most common ways that a fossil is formed is by the process called permineralization. So let's take a theoretical dinosaur, like this Gryposaurus skull here. You have this animal that at some point died, and the soft tissue rots and decays away. The skeleton and the bones are then buried. Over time, more depositional events, more sediment is laid on top. So you have layer after layer of mud or sand. These turn to rock and encase that bone within the rock. Therefore, the bones are now under a lot of heat and a lot of pressure, and they're also subject to something else within rock, groundwater. Groundwater moves through the crystals in rock, and they bring dissolved materials with them, dissolved minerals, and that does two things to bone. It can bring minerals into bone, and it can leach minerals out of bone. So in a bone, just like ours or any dinosaur or any vertebrate animal, you have cavities. What that means is these cavities can be the spots where these dissolved minerals actually collect and recrystallize and actually turn what was once entirely bone into a fossil, which is part bone and part rock. Some other ways that fossils can be formed are via a process that we call replacement. And that is where you have, again, a theoretical dinosaur bone. And instead of it being permineralized, being partially still bone material, all that bone is actually leached away by that acting force groundwater that we talked of. And again, that same material, that groundwater has dissolved minerals in it. It comes into this empty cavity where bone once was, which is now just an empty space brings in those minerals, those minerals that were dissolved, recrystallize, and they turn into an exact copy, cast, or mold of that original dinosaur fossil. And occasionally, in all of these different methods of fossilization, we see varying degrees of recrystallization. Sometimes that doesn't affect the fossil much, sometimes that affects it a little bit more than we see in others. Trace fossils are a kind of fossil that's not a body part, but it's evidence of animal life. We see an example of that right here with this skin imprint from the duckbill dinosaur Gryposaurus. The animal died, fell over into the mud, slaps down here, the skin rots away, the mud hardens, and then more wet mud fills in. Now, when these have turned to rock, we can split them apart. We take the other side, we have an exact replica of what this dinosaur's skin felt like. Some other trace fossils you may be familiar with are trackways. Maybe a dinosaur or other animal is walking along a lake shore and this mud or sand then hardens into rock and then we can find them and study them as paleontologists. It might be little scurry marks of a trilobite from deep at the bottom of the ocean. Another kind of trace fossil are actually dinosaur droppings in other animals. There are even vomit fossils. There are all kinds of different remains from animals that are actually left as traces, and then we can study those too. And that gives us additional information about how these animals, dinosaurs, and others live their lives.